The Institute of Directors Nigeria, as part of its advocacy role in driving governance and institution building, hosted its 2021 Banner Lecture, which was in a hybrid format aligning with the COVID-19 protocols. It brought together ex-official leaders of the IOD Nigeria, elder statesmen, technocrats, and policy makers. The president and chairman of council of the institute, Chief Chris Okunowo, FIOD, gave the opening remarks at the event. I'm elated to welcome you all to the 2021 edition of the biannual lecture of IOD Nigeria with the theme Enterprise Value Creation. As tradition, IOD Nigeria hosts the biannual lecture in honor of its outgoing president and chairman of council at the end of his or her two year tenure. This edition of the biannual lecture is therefore being organized in my honor as I prepare to hand over the burden of leadership of the Institute in a few weeks from today to the next president and chairman of council of our great institute. It is significant that this biennial lecture we are previous to have as guest, of, guest speaker, the renowned ethics and corporate governance champion, respected retired justice of the Supreme Court of South Africa and professor of law, who amongst others is chair Emeritus International Integrated Reporting Council, Professor Mervyn A. King. The keynote speaker, Professor Mervyn King, the Chairman Emeritus of the International Integrated Reporting Council, provided insights on the dynamics of enterprise value creation and the sustainability of organizations. Sustainability, like a coin, has two sides. And enterprise value creation looks at what is the impact which these conditions have on the company itself. So if you look at, um, if you look at something like the Lehman Brothers collapse, it had a huge impact on the company's financial condition, its balance sheet. The um, pandemic has had a huge impact on a company's operating performance, its income statement, its cash flow. And the quality of governance uh, has a huge impact as the society and the environment of the company's risk profile, its cost of capital. And so the European Commission is now looking at restating its non-financial reporting directives and hopefully and gratifyingly the uh, technical team on the Value Reporting Foundation and the, the proposed Sustainability Standards Board, which the IFRS said will be announced in November of this year, will be looking at trying to align these standards so we don't have another fragmentation. So we are now in the era of enterprise value creation, preservation and erosion, accepting that a company could have a business model which could actually result in the erosion of value. So value today is how does the company make its money? What are the positive and negative impacts on the company through its product and its output? But what are the impacts of the economy, the environment, and society on the company itself? And then integrating these material, financial and non-financial matters in an integrated report. So the enterprise value approach is to look at the impacts of these critical dimensions on the balance sheet, on income statements and cash flows, and on the cost of capital. The historic sustainability approach, which companies will still report on issues which don't have this enterprise value, this, this impact, which uh, one of the speakers previously correctly defined from an accounting point of view, enterprise value for a listed company is market value uh, plus, uh, mark, plus debt minus cash on the balance sheet. You get to your enterprise value. So the sustainability approach is, however, the impact of a company's activities and product on those three critical dimensions. And so we have enterprise value creation uh, different from the type of sustainability we understood moving into the second decade of the 21st century, 
So enterprise value creation standards, which will be the focus of the International Sustainability Standards Board, that's my information, which will be announced in November of this year, will be focused on the enterprise value standards similar to SASB standards, Sustainability Accountancy Standards Board. So the purpose of all this is an endeavor by these great international institutions to arrive at a globally accepted comprehensive corporate reporting system. I describe it as all of us are standing on the bank of a stream which is flowing past us are all these framework providers causing clutter and confusion. In the middle are two big stepping stones. One is the Value Reporting Foundation, the other is the International Sustainability Standards Board. But they are stepping stones to try and get this, this globally accepted comprehensive corporate reporting system, which is on the other side of the stream of financial reporting and the sustainability reporting standards, which is flowing past us. So enterprise value creation is the external environment, the business model drawing on the capitals, its inputs are used in the activities to produce a product or render a service, its outputs, which are internal or external, and value manifests itself in increases, decreases, or transformation. But the three dimensions in turn have this positive or negative impact on enterprise value creation. The DD CEO of IIOD, Nigeria, Mr. Daly Alimi, and Chief Chris Okunowo speak further on the theme of the biennial lecture. We are not just looking at um, creating value in terms of Naira and Kobo for the shareholders. We are now looking beyond an organization, an enterprise, creating value for all stakeholders. The, the, the employee, the shareholders, the government, the people, the environment within which it operates. So at the end of the day, you find out that all these things, that all these people and all these things I've talked about work together to ensure the sustainability of not only the organization, but also of the, of the environment. And we've, we've now seen the symbiotic relationship between the two. If the environment is not sustainable, the organization cannot be sustainable. The biggest lessons we have learned has been COVID. COVID came and no matter what you have done in the past decade or whatever, it became obvious that without the society being at peace, without the environment being conducive, no matter what you have done and what is, what is in place for you, you are nowhere. Organizations have to close up because businesses have to close down because the, the society has to be closed down. People could not move around. People could not do anything. And you now ask yourself, organizations are now in a place to work to ensure that we don't have a repeat of such. I am a manufacturing organization, so I ask myself, what is my business with ensuring that there is a, there is a production of a drug that can cure COVID? I am not a pharmaceutical company. But at the end of the day, if COVID continues, it impacts negatively on my customers. It affects my staff. So at the end of the day, on the long run, it affects my productivity. So which means I must be involved in every facet of what ensures continuity, what ensures that the society is able to continuously be sustainable. So this is how, this is where it happens. So creating value within the enterprise goes beyond Naira and Cobra, goes beyond uh, p &L. We're not talking about Okay, apart from BPNL, what value are you giving back to the society to ensure that not only you as an organization can survive, but even the society can survive? First of all, I, I thank God for, for giving me the opportunity to serve this institution. Um, it's been a very wonderful ride. It's been um, challenging, yes. When I took over, we didn't factor in the consequences of COVID. Nobody knew what COVID was going to do. Uh, obviously, COVID was a disruptor, but then we quickly found our feet, we managed and um, regrouped, 
and took on the challenge. And um, I must say, I pay particular, um, I give particular appreciation to the members of the council and indeed the, the workers of the uh, secretariat, uh, indeed led by the DG. Uh, we came up with, with plans on how to uh, ride through this, that period or this period. So to that extent, I'm grateful to God for giving us the opportunity to do the th things we were able to do. As to legacy, I don't know. I, I'll just do what I need to do. I'll leave the, the uh, future or people coming behind me to talk about legacy. Um, but I'm, I would never do anything that I'm not able to put, um, give it all my attention. And I, and I think I tried with this one. I, well, I'm still trying. The session doesn't, or the time doesn't end until next month, 24th of, of June. So, um, but we still have one or two other programs to run before that period. This just happens to be one that we felt that we should get out of the way before we get into the usual um, period of uh, preparing for the AGM. In terms of the uh, topic, obviously, we're very concerned um, about about um, sustainability in the in the economy, uh, be it environmental, what have you. And if you recall that a few weeks ago, we had um, a webinar on the sustainability reporting. Um, when we had at that session over 32 speakers, it was a great success. So what informed this one is the fact that we felt that we needed to have the chair emeritus, in fact, uh, nobody else could have done this better than uh, uh, the person we chose, and the person of uh, Professor Melvin King, Melvin King. He actually is the father of, of uh, reporting, of financial reporting in the world. Um, so we just felt that we needed to, to cap it with, with, the, with the issues of um, um, uh, what's called EV, okay, value, uh, value creation, um, and it, it was very apt. So I am grateful that it all went very well as well. It's obvious that it's still a work in progress. As you've probably heard from him, and there are many things that are still being tied up properly uh, to ensure that the world, the essence is to ensure that we leave this earth, okay, worthy of worthy or good enough for our next for the next generation we should not deplete everything that's in it we should not create havoc and and make a mess of it and if we're able to do all those things even in our corporate lives and the things we do um and the and the kinds of actions we take you know then of course we would have done a good job with the expeditious movement of corporate governance along the lines of sustainable development goals and environment, social, and governance, also known as the ESG, the future of organization and their stability will depend on the conscience of their leaders. This is where the IOD Nigeria will continue to play the key role of shaping leadership and governance to Catholic enterprise value creation.